But what we saw in the data is that over time, there was a bit of a gap between Moderna and Pfizer that the uh, immune response seemed to be a bit more sustained in Moderna. And in the beginning, both Moderna and Pfizer were you know, 95% uh, uh, around that number for protecting against severe disease. And after six months, Pfizer slipped into the 80s and, and Moderna seemed to hold, hold, hold a bit better. And again, the reason for that isn't known. The four week versus three week interval in the first two shots is, is one idea people have. Uh, Moderna has a bit of a higher dose. Uh, but um, we know that the antibody levels were dropping a little more in Pfizer than Moderna. And we know from Israel where, you know, 10 million people or more got Pfizer, where they looked at this, when, when antibody levels dropped in people over 60, there was a risk of getting COVID again, including a more you know, critical illness in, in a small group. And that was reduced significantly by the booster. And so uh, the data from Israel, I think really supported giving the boost into Pfizer uh, recipients who are at higher risk. It's approved for um, certain populations such as healthcare workers, teachers, daycare staff, grocery workers, and those in homeless shelters or prisons, among others. So really, the FDA is approving this for anybody who has a, a public-facing job. You know, you could say, you know, bus drivers, you know, cafeteria workers. So, so really, it's approved for people in frequent contact with the public. And it's also approved for, and I'm quoting again, um, individuals 18 through 64 at higher risk of severe COVID, and that would include anybody who has obesity, you know, even if you're relatively young and, and other medical conditions. So the actual population for whom the booster is approved by the FDA is much broader than just over age 65. So it's a pretty big group of people in reality uh, that the FDA recommended a booster for. They just didn't go farther to say, that, say even though theoretically it would protect other people, they just didn't have the hard data. And I think throughout the pandemic, the FDA really is trying to look at data, look at risk and benefit, and only act when the benefit is so clear by the data. Um, so they didn't act on a theoretical benefit. They only acted on actual data. People that aren't vaccinated are still at very high risk. And, you know, we're, we're tragically, we're seeing people in their 30s and 40s with this Delta variant dying of COVID. So Boosting is important, but it is not nearly as important as unvaccinated people getting vaccinated.